So I know that I said that I wouldn't be covering any dating shows that feature cis hetero couples, but baby, when I tell you I'm so glad that I did, because the producers down to Love Island are meh C. Let's chat. up everybody it's your girl bonnie scotch thank you so much for clicking on my video today i wanted to bring you a recap my first ever recap mind you i'm in the middle of the season but it's fine we're gonna get in where we fit in okay this is my recap for love island usa this is season six episode 26 so i started watching this over the weekend um i was up to episode 19 um just a couple of days ago so i really had to um really push myself to catch up because I really wanted to be current while the conversation was happening. I knew that I was missing a lot. But in any case, um, before I get into this review, go ahead and hit the like button for me. When you hit the like button, not only is it a free way to support my channel, but it also lets YouTube know that I'm here and that you all are rocking with my commentary. So YouTube starts to shoot my content out to other viewers, just like you, an audience who ordinarily would not get an opportunity to connect with my channel. That said, baby, let's get into the mess. Let's just get right into it. Baby, let me tell you something. This is quality reality TV. Do you understand what I'm saying? Quality, quality, bruv. So good, so messy. Baby, them producers. You're no good, you're no good, you're no good, baby, you're no good. They ain't no good. Anyway, child, let me just get into my notes because it's definitely after eight o'clock and I'm not used to doing things this late. I usually record in the mornings um, before my shift with this new schedule, getting on this Love Island schedule. I don't know how I'm going to work it. I'm going to figure it out. But um, I know that a few of you all have asked me to look at this show and I'm so sorry that I didn't look at it sooner something that I'm going to try to be better about as a reviewer, as a content creator is when you all make suggestions at like the top of a season, I will at least give it an honest shot, even if it's not my style of thing, because like ordinarily I probably wouldn't watch a show like this. Um, I did look at ultimatum. I looked at a uh, couples to throuple, but that had like some queer couples in it. And what else did I look at? Other than that, I don't really watch a whole lot of dating shows, but I'm glad that I got in on this one. So here we go. Part one of movie night, baby. The setup leading into movie night, the producers. I got to give y'all y'all tens. I have to give the girls the tens where the tens are due. Do you understand? The episode before, for the episode before to be the social media games, where it's kind of like pulling in these tweets and having them fill in the gaps and guess, you know, who, who the people are that the people are tweeting about. Baby. Anyway, and then before I fully get into this recap, something that I kind of wanted to touch on is... All of this talk since the most recent recoupling about testing relationships, I have a very big issue with it because this is something that I only really hear the men saying. Only the men are the ones who are like, let's test the relationship. This will test the relationship. Can I just say something before I fully get into the review? There are so many factors. There are so many things that are going on outside of your control at any one time that can and will test your relationship. If you have an overbearing mother, that's going to test your relationship. If you're a workaholic, that's going to test the relationship. If you're possessive, if you're controlling, if you're jealous, 
that's going to test the relationship. Literally anything can test the relationship without you bringing a whole person, a whole human being with feelings, mind you, into a situation to test a relationship. So that's where I want to call BS with the men. I'm not into that. And my here's my thing too. If you test me, I'm going to see to it that I fail. Don't test me, sweetie. If you don't have what it takes, if you don't have the balls to come and approach me and talk to me, have a conversation, there's no relationship here. I don't want any tests in my relationship. In my relationships, there are already so many factors, so many things going on that can test a relationship. That being said, let me jump into movie night, episode 26, darling. Okay, so... We start the episode with Aaron gaslighting Kayla about joking about getting in the shower with Daniela. Girl, so Kayla has been working my nerves for quite some time with all of this crying, all of this carrying on is a lot. It's a lot. I feel like I feel like, you know, Aaron is a huge hypocrite, but also Kayla, you don't have to take it. You don't have to sit around and just cry and fall apart anytime something with Aaron happens. You get what I'm saying? So here's my issue with Aaron. Remember at the top of the season when they did one of those challenges, one of those games or whatever, and Kayla kissed Hakeem and Aaron threw the only hissy fit, darling, the only hissy fit. Because she kissed another dude during the challenge. Okay? She had to beg and coddle and grovel to get back into his good graces. He packs his bag, goes over, is making out with Daniela. He's doing all of this stuff. And now he's yelling at her for being angry about the shower comment. Men are good for that. Men are good for flipping some shit on you. I remember I had an ex and I had this, um, actually back in the day I had a blog. Once upon a time I had a blog. Shout out to Blogger, shout out to Blogspot and Live Journal and all the girls who had blogs back in the day. This is like circa 07, 08, 09, like right before Twitter, right? Anyway, I had, I wouldn't say it was a popular blog, but <clears throat> every so often I would be in the city or out in Brooklyn somewhere and legitimately people would be like, oh my God, I read your blog. So that was kind of wild to me. In any case, I get an email one day after I posted some pictures of me and my ex on my blog talking about four month anniversary. I'm so happy, blah, blah, blah. This chick emailed me and was like, um, I f your man, so do with that what you will. I confronted him about it. Not only did he lie, but he gaslit the hell out of me. And to the point where he was like, I'm getting angry because you keep bringing it up. Mind you, I knew I knew that like nobody would make it up, but I really at some point, like I, I let it go. Like I can't remember. I think I just gave up. So, of course, we broke up. We fell out, whatever, whatever. Child, when I tell you seven years later, he admitted that he was cheating. Girl, who read my blog, and she worked at the wing stop a few blocks up the street from me. Now, here's the thing about that that's, like, extra scandalous. I lived around the corner from the wing stop, and I used to go to work in the daytime, so I'm sure he brought her into my house to cheat. But that's what... Aaron was giving me like you're caught in this lie you're caught red-handed and now you're gonna flip it and get angry so that you don't have to be accountable been there done that and you know what I something that I have to remember is that these people are in their 20s and there are a lot of very silly decisions being made and honestly same I I made some bad choices in my 20s, in relationships, 
with men, with women. Shout out to my bisexuals, honey. Messy bisexuals, we clocked in. I'll just say that. That's what that reminded me of. Anyway, um, what else do I have here? Kenny. Kenny always looks sleepy and not present. Like, he doesn't even want to be there. Does anybody else get that vibe from Kenny? And also, is it just me or does he look like Na Naomi Smalls? Are you all familiar with the drag queen Naomi Smalls? I don't know if somebody else has mentioned this. I haven't been in the hashtag until like today. I really got on Twitter to see what people were saying today. <sighs> Janae. So Janae kills me with this pick me stuff that she does. I like Janae, but I remember I was frustrated with her when she cooked eggs three ways for Miguel and interrupted Serena's conversation and she still didn't get chose. And now you're telling this man, oh, but who's going to cook for you and clean for you and change your oil? It's like, y'all don't even know these men and y'all be so willing to jump into laboring yourselves out. I don't know. Like something about that is just very strange to me. Like whatever happened to like, letting a man earn his his spot earn his keep you don't know if he's husband material you don't know that you don't know what type of husband he will be you're jumping to give yourself all this labor whatever happened to like i know the girls are like all about the soft life right now whatever happened to that you all off soft life now because it's giving may life and i don't like it like y'all are too pretty for this anyway Rob is talking some sense into Aaron. Aaron drops the L word on Kayla and she returns it. I don't know. Something about that just felt very manipulative to me. Okay. Now Liv is upset with Kane because he didn't speak to her about, you know, wanting to make a connection with Serena. Understandable. Liv has been through a lot in the house in the same way that Jane, um, Janae has. So I get why she would be upset. It's like, at least have the conversation with me first. And Miguel and Leah are two halves of the same whole. And I think that that is kind of why they work. Miguel is a player. He's all over the place. I really feel like Leah is in her own world and all over the place too. And I feel like that's why the chemistry between them makes sense. I have not liked Leah with anyone else outside of Miguel. It's like, his even like his continence, his face kind of changes when he speaks to her. Did anybody else notice that his face visibly like it looks softer when he's talking to her? I find that so interesting. All right. So what else do I have here? Leah is saying she likes how open and honest Miguel is. You know, I don't feel like Rob ever really lied to Leah. Can somebody like get down in the comments with me and tell me like if I'm wrong about that? I feel like Rob always said he wanted to explore other connections and she just didn't like it. So I'm just wondering now like what what really is the difference? Anyway, the house is waking up at this point and Cordell rolls over. He tells Daya that he wants to have a conversation with her. Daya's like, oh, I want to speak to you too. She runs over to Serena to tell her, oh, I'm about to break up with him first because I'm petty. I think he wants to break up with me. Sister, here's the thing about Daya. Her energy was always weird to me. I have a thread on Twitter. If you go on my, I know it's not called Twitter anymore, but follow me on Twitter at Bonnie Scotch. Same handle. And I have threaded all of my thoughts about Love Island. And I literally said either Di like something is off about Daya or something doesn't sit right. Or I like I said something about her, like it, she just wasn't gelling over for me. And I feel like it's because she was coming on too strong. She was so gung ho about Cordell that I was like, something's funny about this. It wasn't even like she named more than one person that she had her eye on. It was all about Cordell. And I was like, my eyes got squinty. 
All right, what else do I have? So yeah, she tells Serena that she's about to break it off. I'm like, why are you telling Serena this? It just struck me as a little bit pressed, a little bit corny. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me because it's like, girl, you were willing to get strung along this whole time. Now all of a sudden, like, what's the issue? I feel like the real issue is that Daya was called out in the last episode about being a clout chaser and the comments that she made in Odell Beckham Jr.'s comments. And then he asked, or she brought it up and she's like, oh, well, you know, my ex had dinner with him. And if I made a comment, it was on my ex picture and she had all these details. And I was like, whoa, 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 okay, okay. We know what it's giving, sis. Like, you, you came here for your reason to get close. And I looked it up on Twitter. I literally looked up Daya. I was gonna type up Daya Odell. And literally Daya Odell came up and somebody had posted some screenshots of her in his comments and likes and whatever like that. So it's like, girl, I think you're embarrassed because you got called out and now you're trying to save face because the whole time you were willing and ready to be like that puppy, that lap dog, that wait around girl. And even before the situation happened, I was saying to myself, I was like, Daya needs to hang it up. Like, I'm sorry, I am not waiting around on no nigga, on no man to make a decision about a woman that he likes more. True story, I know I keep soapboxing. There was this guy that I was dating. I was in my early 20s at this time. We, you know, we met, it was cool. We had a, a great first date, one of the best. Um, you know, we used to meet up, link up, whatever. I enjoyed dating him. He was a good time. He was easy to talk to, right? Things were still new and fresh. We're like a few weeks in, right? We're kicking it. It's cool. I log on to social media and I see something about a party. And I know that this is a tight knit group of friends that he's in. And he had just got out of a relationship with this girl. And I knew that she was going to be at the party. So... I log on to Instagram or Facebook or whatever what it, whatever it was, and I saw pictures of her at the party, and I knew that they were going to get back together. And he literally called me the next day, and he was like, "Look, oh, me, you know, me and her are going to try to make it work." And I was like, "Thank you so much for telling me. I already knew what the situation and the story was, but I just respected and appreciated him so much for just being straight up and." I let it go. He and I are literally still friends to this day. He's married. Of course he's married. He's a super cool, chill guy. He has done nothing but be supportive of me over the years and all of my creative endeavors. I've known him for like, it's been like over 10 years. It's definitely been like a good, like maybe 12, 13 years, probably. Um, no, it's probably been like 14 years because I threw an event in 2010 and he came to support me. So yeah, we've been cool for a very, very long time and shout out to him, but I just appreciated that he told me, Daya, you were willing to get strung along. You were willing. So don't try to act like, oh, he's disrespectful and he never disrespected you. And ugh, this show... I can't stand when these girls make me stick up for a man child. I'm gonna try not to do it too often, but I have a soft spot in my heart for Cordell. I like Cordell. He did do a lot with Daya, but um, Serena was always back and forth with him. Speaking of Serena, here's my theory on Serena and Cordell and what actually happened. Cause for a while I was like, does Serena actually like this man? Like I couldn't tell, right? And then I think literally just today, it clicked to me what is going on with Serena and Cordell, right? So I've had this experience before where a guy was checking for me, he was pressed about me and I wasn't checking for him. And then one day we went on a date and I gave him a try. We ended up hanging out, kicking it. I liked the connection, it was cool. One day, okay? I was the person that was pressed about him. Okay, so I'll just say that I think that's the situation that happened with Serena. She wasn't feeling him too much in the beginning. And then they started kicking it and she realized how cool he was. 
and she started catching feelings and then he went over to to the other house and she realized how pressed she was listen it happens to the best of us darling it really does it really really does i mean who here can say that that has not happened to them anyway Daya running back to tell the women uh Janae Liv and Serena that she broke it off with Cordell it just looked so corny and thirsty and pressed it was like girl gone somewhere so Cordell pulls Serena for a chat she's still being really closed off all right so movie night so I'm just going to talk about the clips that really stood out to me um Kayla is anticipating that she's going to get it worse you think all right so the handshake clip so Kayla and Aaron share this handshake where they do this little thing and then they kiss pinkies or whatever they lock it in he's eating popcorn okay very casually like nothing ever happened he's just sitting there eating popcorn I'm sorry Aaron is unhinged he is he's unhinged anyway um pitch perfect so this is the conversation where Rob and Liv and Kayla are talking about Leah allegedly taking a back seat to this vote with Andrea Liv and Leah get into it Miguel pipes up and he's saying oh no girl I've ever been with talks like that Miguel shut up what Leah was doing and saying wasn't even that deep like she used the f word a few times i hate when men act all prissy and pompish and like oh my my lady can't say a curse word my mother's ex-husband used to do that to oh lady shouldn't curse shut up anyway um i do think that leah is whiny and I also think that she isn't accountable to the things that she says. I don't know if she genuinely forgets or what, but Leah is very whiny. Now, mind you, I don't dislike any of the women in the house, to be honest with you. Some of the men, but the women, I actually like them all, even though Leah and Kayla annoy me the most. Anyway, um, what else do I have here? Other movie clips of note, Wet Hot American Summer where Aaron and Daniela are making out. So remember when the girls received that text initially in the last episode, um, it was only a partial text. We just saw the conversation. They didn't actually see um, Aaron and Daniela making out. So it was a scandal to actually watch it in full on the big screen. And yeah, that, that was very uncomfortable to watch, you know, and now she's seeing what the shower comment is about she's seeing the full context Aaron lied about it he's saying it was a group conversation it was a joke it wasn't a group conversation stop the cap this is where y'all live this is where y'all stay cap world that's where you live that's where your house is cap world that's where you go cap world because you're full of it you're full of cap and that's where your house is in, 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 in captropolis Daniela told Aaron for what he has with Kayla, he is crazy open. I mean, it's true. We all watched them form this bond. And then the way he was acting with Daniela, if Kayla did the same thing, and even, listen, if Kayla did the same thing, and even if Aaron was doing the same thing with Daniela, I feel like he would still make a big deal about it. I don't know. Something about him just gives me that vibe. So, of course, Kayla is crying again. Aaron, for some reason, looks exasperated. Men are really a trip, I'm telling you. Kayla, girl, I need you to stand up. Stand up! Stand up! I need you to get up. I need you to stand up for yourself, have some self-respect, some dignity. Because all of this crying every minute over, over Aaron over Aaron who can't even keep his mouth closed I don't know if y'all are old enough to remember this but I'm coming into my late 30s okay and oh shit I'm fully in my late 30s because I'm definitely 36 but um 
Do y'all remember in the 90s when Puff Daddy used to always like have his mouth open? He could never close his mouth. My mom used to call him a mouth breather. That's what Aaron gives me, Puff Daddy in the 90s, always with that mouth hanging open. Anyway, the She's Just Not That Into You clip where Serena is saying that in a nutshell, Cordell is not on her level intellectually and he's not smart. And I know that that was very, uh, I know that that was very hurtful for Cordell to watch back. I did feel bad for him. I also felt bad for him in the last episode where he was bringing breakfast to both Daya and Serena and she threw the eggs back on him. I felt like that was unnecessary. Turn it down. Say you don't want it, but you didn't have to get physical like that. Like I, it was just too much for me. Mind you, I like Serena. I like Serena a lot. I again, I like all of the women, but they have their things about them that I'm like, girl, girl. Like Janae and her pick me stuff and the the eggs three ways and the always willing to jump up to be a maid. It's like, girl, stop it. Stop it. Anyway. The next movie clip, when Leah said that she got the ick from Rob crying, I also didn't like the comment that she had about him acting like a bitch. Um, I feel like men should be able to show their emotions and their vulnerability. I feel like when they don't, it is just processed as rage. I need for men to have a deeper range of emotions than just rage. And I need for us women to enable that wherever we can. Let the man cry. Now, yes, was it was it C-U-N-T dramatics when he went and jumped in that pool? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was a lot. It was too much. But also the crying and the rolling around on the floor, Rob, Rob. Show your emotions. Let's be careful of veering into manipulative territory. I don't mind a man crying. I don't mind a man crying around me in public, on TV, wherever. Let it out. Get it out. Get it up off you. Um, Not just men, but in general. You know, if you don't cry, release those emotions from your body. A lot of the times it gets... It gets stuck in a place. It gets repressed somewhere in your body. So um, that's what I'll say about that. But apparently, Rob is a Virgo, honey. Listen, I have had my share of Virgos. I have had my share. Lord knows. Okay? Virgo men be with the C-U-N-T dramatics. It's a lot of dramatics. It's a lot of pomp and circumstances. A lot going on with them, darling. So I'll just say that. But anyway, y'all, that was the episode, you all. I am so looking forward to movie night part two. I feel like it'll be a little bit more a scandalo than this. But um, I remember watching this, this, um, this episode. And I was like, what? Am I on the right episode? Because it, we were like almost like an maybe at least an hour into the movie night episode before we actually got to it. Um, so anyway, that was the episode. Again, go ahead and hit the like button for me on the way out. Drop down in the comments. You know, I want to hear from y'all, especially the people that have been asking me to review Love Island. And I will see y'all for the next one. Peace.